Before we look at an even bigger picture, let me introduce some more concepts here. You are already familiar with many kinds of spaces, including the physical space, one-dimensional or two-dimensional, etc. spaces. To understand the bigger picture, we need more space. So, from the point of view of the experiencer, whatever is being perceived can be called as a perception space. This is where all the perception happens, all the experience happens in the perception space. The cause of the perception space is information space, where information resides in the form of structures that we saw. The information has a substrate that can be called as the memory space. The information sticks and therefore it forms a memory. Although in the memory space we do not see well-structured entities, we see memory, we see patterns that are semi-permanent. The memory also has a substrate, which is the vibration. The memory is formed using the vibration. Memory is a sea of vibration. Some of the patterns, they stick and form copies and that is why. And that is when we enter the memory space, leave the vibration space. Although the substrate of the memory is vibration only, it does not disappear. In the vibration space, we have only patterns that are impermanent. The vibration space also has a substrate and that is the potential space. The vibrations do not really exist. There is only potential for them, which manifests sometimes. In the potential space, there is nothing obviously. There is only potential of there being a vibration. Now the interesting thing is that the perception space is an illusion. The information space is being presented as an illusion in the form of irreducibles. That is what we saw. The senses are responsible for producing this illusion in part. And the information space and memory space and the vibration space, they are only concepts. We never see the information space. We never see information. We only see the perception space. We do not see the memory space. It is inferred because of the semi-permanent experience. We say that there is a memory of some kind. And the vibration space is also a concept. And the vibration, because it is non-physical, non-mental, non-local, non-temporal, will never be seen. We infer the vibration because we see the change, we see the effects of vibrations, we see its cyclic change. And so we dig out the simplest kind of cyclic change, out of which all the changes are formed, that becomes the vibration and there appears all these changes. And the most interesting thing is that the potential space is the actual space. These four, they are not actual. And the paradoxical thing is because... It is not there. There is only potential for something to be there. So nothing really exists there in the actual space. This is the paradox. That which is unmanifested, only potential, is closest to the reality. And that which is manifested, that which is, that which is our direct experience, is the most fake kind of illusion possible. And we have in-between spaces which are just an aid for understanding what is going on. So, probably I am going to use all these words while describing the bigger picture. Once again, here is a picture of uh, the layered structure and because of impermanence, the lower layers, they appear and disappear in a cyclic manner and the higher layers, they are more permanent although they also may disappear but it takes a very long time if time makes any sense here. The higher layers, which I have called as the sub-layers of the causal body, individualized memory and non-individualized memory. These three sub-layers, I have grouped it together because they appear to be semi-permanent. It seems that they do not disappear so quickly and it seems that this memory space, it grows. It recruits more patterns from the vibration space into itself by copying or by forming more structures through the self-organizing process. And obviously, there is not a single instance of it. There are uncountable instances. Lots and lots of these memory spaces, they start appearing. This cannot be perceived. This is not happening in the perception space as far as humans are considered. 
it is inferred logically because of the infinite potential there is a very big possibility that there will be many of these structures which i named as non individualized memory which then condenses into individualized memory and then forms a pool of memories called causal body and the causal body causes the formation and functioning of the lower layers till certain point till the narrow is part of the structure and then it interfaces with the lower layers through a memory bridge so these causal structures they grow as they accumulate more experiences the memory the memory space grows and because there are many it forms a group because of the mutual influences there the group has similar characteristics almost similar like they will be able to produce the lower layers they will be able to communicate they will be able to form memory bridges and so on although the variety is also huge just like we have one dna which is the basic molecule which replicates but the amount of variety here is mind boggling the forms it has produced is mind boggling but there is a similarity in all the forms because they are based on the same molecule similarly in the group memory space contains the causal bodies and etc which have some kind of similarity and that is why i am calling them as group memory because they can be grouped together like this they have similar attributes and we get clusters of group memories because similar non individualized memory spaces and individualized or causal memory spaces they tend to cluster together just like if you see a jungle you will find that trees of one species are clustered together because one tree grows and it produces seeds that scatter around it and more trees grow and then the cluster of the same species increases and occasionally it is encroached by some other species and in some other area of the same forest you will find a different species growing and there is a cluster of that plant there something similar is happening here now these clusters of group memories they grow to a huge extent it is not even possible to measure how big these are and they have a large variety of structures some of them are entirely made up of the lower layers the lower layers are nothing but very tightly bound areas of the memory if you recall the definition of areas it is just a layer in the universal memory they form very very tightly coupled structure and very stable structures although not as stable as the causal bodies or other higher layers but these do last more than the middle layers we call them the rule bound areas because they are bound very tightly by the rules right now right here we are sitting in a rule bound area we call it our physical universe the planets the galaxies the stars hills trees rivers oceans they are patterns in the memory in this rule bound area they change algorithmically therefore we can write down a mathematical equation to describe most of the changes that are happening here when these structures they follow very predictable rules we can call them as rule bound areas these are form within the group memory and these areas also grow they also recruit more patterns they also spread in the universal memory and there are corresponding non rule bound areas also which are not so tight in rules where everything goes they do not form stable experiences but they are there in the whole group memory space when we combine together these rule bound areas and the non rule bound areas and the clusters of non individualized memory or causal bodies we can give it a name and the name that i have given it is greater memory it is really great because it contains millions of such physical universes and it contains uncountable number of the causal bodies and different kinds of structures whatever there's almost limitless amount of memory here limitless variety but still it is finite it is not infinite by limitless i mean that things keep appearing all the time it keeps expanding although never becomes infinite but there is no limit to it now again through inference we can say that 
there is a possibility that such greater memory spaces they will happen in other parts of the universal memory also there are no rules that only one greater memory space will be there and there is a possibility that in the whole greater memory will make a copy of itself now who knows how much time it will take but it is possible and not only it is expanding it is busy copying itself into other areas of the universal memory like i said the copying mechanism is something like resonance when we play a note near a tuning fork it starts vibrating in the same note and common sense tells us that we can place many many tuning forks hundreds of them and they all get the tone they all get the same frequency this is the mechanism of non physical copies so there is no such rule that there will be only one greater memory it can copy itself that is one way to form a cluster of great, greater memories again the same pattern is repeating it is only at a higher level it almost looks like cell division in a tissue same pattern here as below so above the same cell division pattern re- repeats in the example of the jungle that i have given same thing repeats in the group memory same is in the rule bound area same is in the greater memory and we get something called a greater neighborhood which functions more or less in a similar way like the greater memory but the variety will be beyond our grasp when we look at what one molecule can do here we are talking of almost almost infinite potential here and you can imagine blank areas between the greater memories which makes it almost impossible to reach the greater neighborhood but it is not totally impossible and you can imagine that there will be some unreachable neighborhoods and when we combine all these together we get the universal memory it is not even possible to see the current rule bound area in this universal memory it is so tiny it is not even one pixel here it has disappeared completely this whole of our physical universe amounts to nothing in the universal memory there is so much redundancy here it probably there are millions of copies of the same universe here, everywhere scattered everywhere there are billions and billions of the causal bodies in these group memories in a greater memory and the individualized memory is just a speck of dust from the point of view of the universal memory the individual does not even exist it is so tiny that is what an average person calls as me but i am not so tiny that is only a structure in the memory that is one grain of sand in the infinite desert of the universal memory although desert is not a very good metaphor here it is like a tropical jungle where everything is happening the universal memory is also finite in this cannot be perceived this the universal memory is not in our perception space the most of the universal memory it lies in the vibrational space most of it is empty waiting for the structures to form but there are vibrations and it is it is being manifested so when we take a look at the manifested existence it looks like a universal memory surrounding the universal memory will be unmanifested potential space where where there is no sharp boundary the universal memory is expanding into this unmanifested space at some some kind of mind blowing speed because instantly the whole greater memories they, they are appearing every second all you need to do is take a look and billions and billions of greater memory spaces are cre- created in the unmanifested areas this is something which a human cannot even imagine there is no scope of understanding what it is so when we combine the manifested and unmanifested together we see that it is happening on something which is very very familiar this is the experiencer all of this mind boggling infinite experience is happening in the space of the experiencer where there is a potential for everything to be the experiencer itself is emptiness since all of this is happening in the experiencer there is a possibility to be conscious of it and we are conscious of this insane amount of creation in our perception space a tiny tiny experience but it is tiny because of the reasons that we discussed 
before it does have a potential to become any experience and it does have a potential to change for for an infinite amount of time while being small i can see only one frame of the movie but nothing prevents me from seeing infinite amounts of frames when they roll past me the strip of the film can go to infinity in this way even though our experiences are small and limited they are still big and infinite when experience ends other starts there is no end of it this universal memory is bubbling with uh, bubbles of greater memory everywhere we can't even imagine how many will be there we can't imagine what will be there in those memory spaces what kind of information patterns will be there but logic tells us that the basic principles are going to be similar there will be layered structures there's no doubt about it there will be communication there will be evolution and growth and decay it will be all cyclic and there will be the same processes that we listed earlier we can make some laws some universal laws although we are very tiny we, we are not even a speck of dirt we have this ability to know that is that is paradoxical beyond that we have the ability to experience whatever is happening here this is real magic this is beyond the wildest imagination imagination seems like a barren desert compared to what is out there it is beyond imagination so if this is not mind blowing i don't know what will be this is your introduction to the universal memory we are going to talk more about this and we are going to see ways to explore the universal memory because a seeker is not really satisfied with logical inferences and pictures schematic diagrams like this he demands a direct experience and that is also possible because it is me i can do anything so not only is the universal memory huge it is almost infinite it is also evolving changing is very dynamic and multifaceted it is not completely wild although it is an illusion some laws can be derived simply by observation we can study it even though we don't understand it completely so we are going to do that in the coming episodes starting with the dynamic nature of the memory <laughs> <laughs>